Hello Shooters. One of you out there uh, wrote to me and suggested that I create a video on magazine management. So that's what this topic is going to be about. Um, before we get into the actual topic itself, let's, uh, let's go through our safety brief. The magazines that I'm going to be using today are my dry fire magazines. My dry fire magazines all have blue tape on them, blue signifying training. And I have two different types of uh, dummy ammo I'll be using. Uh, orange plastic rounds and then these uh, these rounds that I made myself what I did is I took a wolf cartridge and I drilled a hole through it and dumped out the powder stood it up squirted some W40 in there to kill the primer the next day while pointing the rifle in a safe direction I chambered it and dropped the hammer on it just to make sure the, pow the primer got dented and I did the exact same thing with a number of wolf 556 rounds so now there's no doubt in anybody's mind that these are dummy cartridges because of the holes and the dented primers. Okay, uh, and let's make sure that our long arms have no live ammunition in them. We're going to visually and tactically, tactically means is more important because I can do this when it's night or day. I know that rifle is clear. And the second one. I want to visually, but more importantly, tactily, visually, tactily, confirm that it is clear. And I'm following my standard SOP for dry fire, which is I have at least one closed door between me and any live ammunition. There's no live ammunition in this room. There is never any live ammunition in my blue tape mags. Never is there any live ammunition in my blue tape mags, my training mags. Uh, we want to do all we can to ensure that while we're doing dry fire that we don't have a negligent discharge to, for our protection and for everybody else's protection. Okay, magazine management. What does that mean? We have a, a number of magazines, whether it's a few or whether it's many, and we want to uh, the most efficiently way possible utilize those magazines so they work to our advantage and uh, give us the edge in a firefight. Okay, let's talk about dump pouches. There's, uh, there's some times where it makes no sense to have a dump pouch. For a home defense situation, go ahead and dump your magazines on the ground. They're going to be there in your house. Okay? If you're a police officer and you're involved in a firefight, it's typically the area you're involved in a firefight is quite small. It's going to be located either around your vehicles or a building nearby, and you own the ground. You're going to be, you're going to occupy that ground for hours after the firefight. You'll have plenty of time to police up your magazines. However, in a military type situation, military contractor, or uh, some context like that, when you're doing fire maneuver, when you're going from point A to point B, uh, if you're dropping your mags along the way you either A, never have the time to come back and look for them, B, if you do have the opportunity, you probably won't be able to find them, and C, if you do find them, they may be damaged. Uh, firefights are hell on the area. Uh, high velocity fragments from bullets and the bullets themselves and explosions just wreak havoc on the ground, and if your magazines are out there laying on the ground, they may become part of that havoc. So in those type situations, and as civilians out here in the, the real world, if the balloon ever does go up and we have to defend our neighborhoods and our families, we may never have the opportunity again of getting magazines that are high capacity and fit our rifles. So from that standpoint, it makes sense to retain your magazines also. Okay, so let's talk about magazine management. First of all, this is my primary magazine pouch. There's nothing in this pouch ever except a magazine that has a full 30 round, full capacity. This magazine pouch always has a magazine that's full capacity. If I don't have any magazines left that are full capacity, this pouch is empty. This pouch is only for full magazines. This pouch can be full magazine, can be partial magazine, can be an empty magazine. And I'll, ex I'll explain how that works in just a second here. Okay, so let's let's. But let's demonstrate how we begin our magazine management process. Okay. Now let's say we're doing some fire maneuver. 
and I have just maneuvered. It's my turn to provide cover fire for my buddy or my fire team, other element of the fire team over there. I want to make sure that I have a full magazine before they take off because the last thing I want, the last thing they want, is for in the middle of their maneuver for them to hear no gunfire coming from my area, no cover fire at all. Hey, dude, I'm sorry, I'm changing mags. Okay, that doesn't work. So before they take off, no matter how many rounds I have left in this mag, because I don't know how many rounds are left in this mag, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to put it in my dump pouch. I'm going to get a fresh mag from my magazine pouch. And I'm going to get it in there, charge the handle, and now it's time for them to go. Now I'll have a full mag to provide cover fire for them while they're on their maneuver. Okay, another situation is doing uh, urban fighting. Building to building, room to room, house to house. Uh, we encounter some bad guys, fire some rounds. I suck at being able to count rounds in a firefight. I don't even try to. So, when we get through that building or through that room, and it's time to go to the next building or the next room, I'm going to take in that mag, and I'm going to put it in my dump pouch, and I'm going to get a full magazine out of my pouches, load it in, crank the charging handle. Now I know before I go into that next building or that next room that I've got a full magazine. And I have the confidence that it'll go through, that I'll have 30 rounds on tap. Then before I go to the next room, I see that I'm, I'm out of magazines here. Let's say that I've gone through all of them. So they're all my dump pouch and I got the one in the rifle. I have no idea how many rounds are in the rifle. I'm going to call a security halt. My team members are going to do security while I pull this magazine out and I pull all the other magazines out of my dump pouch. And I empty all the rounds and I fill up the mags. My very first full mag goes in my pouch. The next full mag goes in the rifle. And then let's say I have a partial mag. Okay, I didn't have enough to fill it up. My partial mag is going to go in my pouch, feed lips up, Bullets pointed in the same direction. I keep all my bullets pointed to the right. Some guys keep their bullets pointed to the left. I do the right. So, my partial mag, see my full mag, feed lips down, bullets to the right. My partial mag, feed lips up, bullets to the right. And I have an empty mag. This goes in my pouch, feed lips up, pointed to the left. Okay. Now, since this is full, this pouch is full, I know I got a full 30 round mag right there. When I go to this pouch, I can feel, when I grab it, I can feel that the bullets are up. That way my, my mind knows that I've got a partial mag. I have no idea how many bullets are in there. Then when I go to reach for this one, and I feel its feed lips up, pointed the opposite direction, I know that sucker's empty, and I'm out of rounds. Okay? That's magazine management. That's how I know the state of my magazines, no matter where they are. Let's, uh, let's try that with a different rig. Okay, here I'm wearing a Alice system here. Got the magazine pouches, canteens, butt pack. Typical Alice gear. Yeah, I have it modified with 550 cord. Get rid of all the metal connectors, make it lighter, make it more comfortable. But it's basically, basically an Alice rig. This is, uh, these are still, still to be had on the surplus market. They're good rigs. They're cheap. Makes them, you know, that makes them good. Not that they're cheap, but they're, they're good quality and they work. Uh, may not be the most high speed on the block, but they do the job. Uh, back in the day, they didn't make purpose-made dump pouches. We had to come up with uh, our own. And uh, some guys would put their empty magazine in a cargo pocket. Uh, some guys would dump them down their blouse. Some guys had a carabiner here on their web gear somewhere that they'd click their old school. That's an old school mag magpole. They'd click their old school magpoles through there. Um, I didn't like any of those, and I'll tell you why. Uh, magazines are rectangular in shape. They have sharp corners. They have edges on them. So if they're in a cargo pocket and you have to hit the ground or roll, these are no fun to roll on when they're poking into your thigh. 
I don't like the down the shirt method either for the same reason. Got to hit the deck. Uh, don't want to get one of these in the gut. And uh, the carabiner on the LBE, you know. Yeah, when you're firing off rounds, it's making a lot more noise than some magazines clanging together. But then when you're trying to maneuver and outflank your enemy and uh, you're not firing, you, you know, you're playing jingle bells running through the forest there. And I, I think that's a bad idea. So uh, we used all kinds of different things for dump pouches. Um, Claymore bags worked. Gas mask pouches worked. Uh, some guys tried using uh, canteen pouches, but the mags fall out of there pretty easy. Uh, this just happened to be a South African bag. Just you know what I have because I don't have any gas mask pouches anymore or any of that stuff because I have purpose-built ones. But back in the day, this is what we used. Okay, okay. this is my primary magazine pouch. This is my go-to magazine pouch. When I when I open up that pouch, that's my very first magazine change. Full magazines only go in this pouch. Same with this pouch. Only full magazines. These two pouches are my secondary pouches. These pouches I will use to feed my primary pouches. Okay, so uh, in a firefight, I go through these pouches. The empties go in the dump pouch. Then, if I get a chance, I'll take these full magazines and put them in here. Then I'll take this set of full magazines and I'll put those in here. Then I'll go through these consolidate what I can just like before if there's partials I'll stick them in rounds up bullets pointed to the right if it's an empty magazine I'll stick them in the pouch feed lips up pointed the opposite direction so this is my primary magazine pouches my secondary magazine pouches so that's how I, I, I maintain or how I manage my magazines in a system like this Okay, let's uh, let's move on to something else. Okay, here's a load bearing vest. This is uh, made for a different mission than uh, some of those lighter rigs are. Same thing here. Primary magazine pouch. This is where I go for my first reload. This is where I go for my second set of reloads. Or if I have time, um, I'll cycle these magazines into my primary pouch. Just like just kind of like the Alice rig there. This can have partial, full, or empty mags. This can have partial, full, or empty mags. This only has full mags in it. If there's not full mags, this is empty. Okay. Dump pouch is built into the rig. Dump pouch is right there. This is a purpose-built dump pouch. It's uh, higher quality than any of these other bags. The purpose-built dump pouch has a there's a, a rubberized slit in the top of there. So it's easy to get the mag in, but it's not going to fall out when I'm running around. Same principles before as even as the, the simple Chinese rig. Uh, this is the best way to manage your magazines. Okay, now we're going to move on to something else. Okay, here's the ubiquitous uh, chest rig, plate carrier. Okay, I've got a hard plate in here. Oh, just as an aside, uh, when you get your plate carrier set up, it's going to ride a little bit higher than what you think it is. And that's because it's a it's a it's for your chest, not not for your belly. Okay, if you have any lower, you're not be able to bend over. So it makes it hard to go prone, makes it hard to get up, makes it hard to move if you can't have full mobility with your hip area. So uh, make sure that when you get your chest rig set up with your plate carrier, that you can do the bend over test and the sideways test and make sure you're good to go. I'm running uh, Taco magazine pouches on here. I really like these Taco magazine pouches. I got a rifle pistol, rifle pistol, rifle pistol, and double rifle. Um, I can run my AR mags. I can run my AK-74 mags. I can run my AKM mags. I can run my FN mags. I like this, this these these pouches. I can run all my my uh, my long arms without without having to change setups. They're very, very easy to get out. They're not quite as easy to get in, but they're not a pain. But it doesn't matter how, how you know, nobody's ever won a gunfight by putting their magazine back in the fastest, in the pouch. Okay. Dump pouch is right here. I've got it running as far forward on my left side as I can. The reason being is I, you know, sometimes I'm running the rifle left-handed. 
That magazine is totally empty. Sometimes I run on the rifle left-handed, running and gunning, and I got to change mags. It's very easy for me to reach that dump pouch with my uh, with my right hand if I had it back farther. You know, because of the plate carrier, and it would uh, it'd be more awkward. So I run it a little bit closer, uh, make easy access there. Same principles and philosophy as before. These two pouches only carry full magazines. These two pouches, uh, they can be empty or partially empty uh, or full. If they're full, they're going to be down, bullets facing to the right. If they're partially empty, they're going to be up, feed lips up, bullets facing to the right. If they're totally empty, totally empty AR mag here. If they're totally empty, they're going to be feed lips up. Facing the opposite direction. That way I, I immediately know when I when I reach over there to grab it that it's empty. And if I'm going for that magazine and it's empty, that means I'm out of ammo. Totally. So this is just a way that uh, manage your magazine so you always know the status of your mags and how many rounds you have left. I do the exact same thing with the handgun mags. This is my primary handgun mag. This will be the first magazine I go to to do a mag change. Then when I get a second I'm going to take this mag and I'm going to stick it back over there. Now these I can't stick in opposite or whatever or partial. These go in my pocket or in my dump pouch. Doesn't really matter which. Um, only full magazines go in these two. If I got a partial, I'll stick it in my pocket or my dump pouch, and that's where it's going to stay until I have an opportunity to, uh, to fill it back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the indoor range. I'll have to use my AK-22, I mean, excuse me, my AR-22. I'm going to time five magazine changes retaining the magazine and five magazines changes doing a speed load we'll compare the times and uh, and then you'll decide for yourself if it's worth keeping your magazines for me I've already decided it's worth keeping my magazines unless I'm in that certain situation that uh, that I'm that I don't need to keep my magazines uh, let me bring up one more instance let's let's say that I'm in an open firefight for whatever reason I haven't decided to run to cover, which is a stupid, stupid idea on my part. But if I'm standing in the open, in a gunfight, and I run dry, I'm dumping the mag and going for the new one because it's going to save me a couple of seconds. But if I'm standing in the open, in a stand-up firefight like that, I made a whole bunch of mistakes that uh, may cost me my life. I shouldn't be in a stand-up gunfight like that. I should be seeking cover. I should be uh, uh, maneuvering to cover. Shouldn't be caught in a, in a stand-up firefight. So let's go to the indoor range and uh, time some uh, magazine changes, keeping the magazine in the dump pouch, and time some magazine changes, dumping them on the ground. See you in a minute. Okay, we're here at the range. We're going to start off with doing 10 speed loads. We're dump, dump the magazine directly on the ground, record the times. Then we're going to do 10 where we use the dump pouch to retain the magazine and record the times. So, going hot.
Okay, now we're going to do 10 while using the dump pouch. Going hot. All right, here's our times. Speed load, that means we're dropping the mag on the ground. Retention means we're using a dump pouch. As we go down here, just barely over four, mid threes, upper threes, upper threes, lower fours, mid four, mid three, four, upper three, low three. High of 4.21, low of 3.25, a second difference there. You know, uh, my AK, uh, excuse me, my AR-22 mags, one of them fits the mag well a little bit tighter than the other one. And you can see me trying to fumble with that, getting it out sometimes. Okay, putting the mag in the dump pouch, low four, upper four, mid four, upper three, upper three, mid three, upper three, upper four, mid three, low three. Um... Total of 38.12 there, total of 40.13 there, so an average of 3.81, 4.01, so keeping the mag takes me 0.2 seconds versus dumping it on the ground. Now, I starred these highs and lows because uh, I guess it's best if you talk to people that do statistics and stuff that you toss out the high and the low, that gives you a better average. So... I tossed out the high and the low, the high and the low. It is interesting to note that the low in both cases was my very last one. That does prove that perfect practice does Im improve until you get to the point where you're perfect. I, I'm not there yet. Um, so, when you take out the high and the low, and you take out the high and the low, average of 3.83 and 4.04, that gives... Uh, no. 0.18 seconds difference to keep the mag versus dump the mag on the ground. Okay, some final thoughts. Um, to me, the numbers speak for themselves. To me, it's a no-brainer that in uh, the situation where it warrants it, like in an offensive situation, you're out there running and gunning, it makes absolutely no sense to drop your mags on the ground. You know, home defense, law enforcement is a different deal. But uh, for that other application, it's a no-brainer to me. However, what I do hope is that uh, through watching this video, it's given you the motivation uh, to go out and do this on your own, to tra train on your own. Find out which way you like the bullets resting on the mags, where they go left or where they go right, or whether you like to mix them up. Find your way for managing your magazines, how you're going to do it so that you know the status of your magazines, just by touching, okay? That'll help you give you the edge in a firefight. Uh, so get out there and train. Be safe. Train hard. Uh, if you have any questions, post them down below. Post them on my YouTube, my Facebook, my blog, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. So until next time, be safe. Good shooting. <laughs>